Cabinet of Curiosities. Welcome back to the 10th annual Halloween special. We're almost at the end of October. I hope you guys have been having a really good one. Today we're going to be talking about Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, a new eight episode anthology series, each episode covering a wide range of horrors. From mysterious storage lockers to gigantic rats to terrifying autopsies, this show has a lot to offer. But before we get into the rest of the review, I do want to give a special thank you to the sponsor for this video, Shudder, the home for Halloween, also available as part of the AMC Plus Premium Bundle. Shudder is a premium streaming service with the best selection of horror, thriller, and supernatural movies and series uncut and commercial free, from Hollywood favorites and cult classics to original series and critically acclaimed new films you won't find anywhere else else. Shudder is part of the AMC Plus Premium Bundle, where you can also find award-winning shows and fan-favorite movies. AMC Plus is your destination for genre-defying storytelling. I've had a Shudder subscription for many years, and lately I've had a really good time watching their 101 scariest horror movie moments of all time. It's a countdown series that delves deeply into some of the most traumatizing and horrifying movie moments of the past 100 years. And they interview a lot of amazing guests like Mike Flanagan or Tom Savini, Ed Edgar Wright or Mick Garris, and these folks all come together to celebrate horror, but also some moments that have been truly horrifying to watch, and I'm having a great time watching that. And right now, you can get 31% off an annual subscription to Shudder if you use the promo code HOME, so check out that link in the description below to learn more about that, and thank you so much to Shudder for sponsoring this video. When it comes to a show like Cabinet of Curiosities, I can tell you right now that this is exactly my kind of shit. It is so up my alley, it's not even fair. And this goes beyond the stories themselves, even the concept of this show. This is exactly what I would be doing if I was in Guillermo del Toro's position. If I had that kind of clout and that kind of respect and admiration for my peers and that kind of money from Netflix, I would be trying to provide this sort of platform for filmmakers that I respected. I think it's so cool that he's doing this because this show isn't just like a bunch of random filmmakers that perhaps the producers or even Netflix chose. This is clearly curated by del toro himself because the people who are involved in these episodes have all done really great stuff namely david pryor who made the empty man someone i've clearly been championing on this channel for a long time now and jennifer kent who made the babadook i think one of the best horror films ever made and i love the format of every episode too the fact that del toro materializes out of the darkness at the start to introduce every episode to us this, of course, has been done before, and he's perhaps paying homage to shows like Alfred Hitchcock Presents. But intros like that that acknowledge the viewer, that reach out of the screen and say, I know you're watching, I'm going to tell you a really fucking cool story, makes me want to get some popcorn and get cozy on the couch during this crisp fall weather. Of course, all this wouldn't mean anything if the episodes weren't any good. I believe that there is not a single bad episode in this entire first season. There are certainly some episodes I was interested in less than the others, and there are absolutely some standouts and ones that really just rose above the pack, but I would not call a single one of them bad. They're all made with extreme skill. Every story has at least something about it that's interesting, and the performances across the board are all very good. But it's the fact that every director was given such free reign to tell the stories they wanted to tell in the way they wanted to tell them that makes this show stand out, because every episode feels different. If you look at episode three, The Autopsy, directed by David Pryor, an extreme precision to the framing, the blocking of the actors, he puts so much depth in every single image. And with this episode, it confirms to me that The Empty Man was by no means a fluke or just some kind of freak of nature of a movie, because the man is clearly very skilled. I cannot wait to see what else he does. I will watch anything he directs. Please, people who are listening who have money, just give the man money to make stuff. He's great at his job. And then you have The Outside from Anna Lily Amirpour. Sorry if I said her name incorrectly, but she directed A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. And her episode's about a woman who's trying so hard to fit in at her job. She's always felt like she's an outsider and she hates the way she looks. And when Dan Stevens comes on her television in the middle of the night for a late night commercial for some sort of beauty enhancement product, she gets very excited about this and it pretty much ruins her life. But does it? 
And so there's a lot of really interesting questions that are poised by this episode. And the director of Mandy, Panos Cosmatos, has an episode with Peter Weller, Robocop himself, that feels like it's pulled right from some sort of 1986 anime. Every single light in this episode has a streak. There's film grain everywhere. It made me feel like I was watching something that was shot on 16 millimeter and then put onto VHS and then transferred back to 35, then back to beta tape. Somehow in there, this episode exists. And there are some incredible creature designs as well. The first episode, Lot 36, which stars a very good Tim Blake Nelson, has an amazing creature near the end. In Graveyard Rats, the second episode, I loved everything with those rats near the end. I found myself very claustrophobic and on the edge of my seat during the finale of that episode. And the makeup work in particular in David Pryor's episode, The Autopsy, is astounding. There's multiple autopsies performed in that episode and they all look so startlingly real that it turned my stomach. The final episode, The Murmuring, directed by Jennifer Kent, is the one that scared me the most. It's not as frightening or horrifying in regards to its imagery. It's actually very simple, but I found myself afraid for what she might reveal when she turns the camera on things that Essie Davis is looking at. And just the fact that Essie Davis and Jennifer Kent made something together again, I was so excited to see that. And with The Babadook and The Nightingale and now this episode, similar to David Pryor, I will watch anything Jennifer Kent does. I think she's a genius. I want 10 seasons of this. I want this show to just keep going forever. This generation needs a great horror anthology show, and I love that Guillermo del Toro is saying, here's money, go make something great, and just getting out of their way. It's just so, it's fucking beautiful, man. And I'm saying this as a filmmaker. I love that that is happening, and I want to see this show succeed, and I want so much more from it. I really enjoyed watching it. I hope you guys check it out. Thank you so much for continuing to watch the 10th annual Halloween special. I have one more video coming for you guys very soon. As always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.